what is up guys welcome to vintage genetics where it is all about classic bodybuilding and today will be an awesome chest workout with my dad of course starting out with the bench press the most basic exercise for the chest that you have to perform in a certain way to get most benefit out of this exercise a lot of people ask me how do you lift so much weight why is your form so good it's all about consistency and keeping this exercise in for a very long time and actually feeling the muscle after a while because a lot of people ask me as well i'm doing this exercise it's supposed to be the best exercise for chest but i simply cannot feel the chest while doing the exercise what's wrong so the thing is, you shouldn't try to have a mind-muscle connection during this exercise. What you should simply do is make sure that the bar touches your chest. And you can see, if you look at the shape of the chest muscle, you can see it changing. It's all about making sure that the chest stretches out to the max. And by the way, while I'm talking about the bench press, a lot of people also have such a grip and such a way to perform the bench press that their shoulders, mainly the front delts, are starting to injure or you start to impinge or simply feel something that doesn't feel quite right. I already have a shoulder fix video on my channel talking about how to fix your shoulders and this is a stretch that I perform and I actually got this taught by a physiotherapist who told me when I had uh, a shoulder injury that I had to do this stretch whenever I felt some impingement in the front delt. And of course you have to train the rear delts as well to keep a balance in the pulling power of both the front delts and the rear delts. But if you're doing a lot of chest exercises, it is important to stretch out that muscle as it is under great pressure and not stretch out quite enough. But anyway, moving on to the bench press again, the grip here is very important because what I said is that the chest has to stretch out to the max and the only way to truly do that is to have a pretty wide grip. But look at my forearm, it stays straight. So you have to find a grip for you uh, when you film yourself and you look at your forearm, it stays pretty much in the same position. Some people grip it too narrow and their forearm doesn't stay in a straight position. And if it does stay in a straight position like this, the weight is perfectly balanced on the wrists and the chest is able to perform the maximum amount of power it can. And that way you can actually do a lot more weight and your chest is overloaded with a lot more you know weight as well which causes more hypertrophy which causes more muscle growth which gives you a better pump in the chest and a better pump gives you a better mind muscle connection so after doing a heavy set like this trust me the pump i feel is amazing but even when doing heavy sets like this your form has to be on point but whenever you're doubting about reaching those 10 or 12 reps always have a spotter behind you and luckily i trust my dad 100 percent to spot me he knows exactly when i might fail and when i might not so he only spots when it's necessary and uh, he doesn't spot when it's not necessary because a lot of guys spot right from the first rep but if you do that, you already know that it's too heavy for you and you don't want to risk any injury because there are so many people who injure their chests while doing a bench press that you shouldn't go too heavy at all. What I like to do is stick around five to six reps as the very last set with a spotter behind you and don't go for your max one pr because if you do that you might simply risk an injury or risk tearing that muscle which ruins the aesthetics of your physique forever so here i'm going to do the heaviest set i as you can see did around six reps and after that some forced reps so first i'm going to do six clean reps without the help just with my own strength and as you can see the first few reps go quite easy but all of a sudden the weight becomes too heavy and the muscle starts to fail and then it starts to become really difficult to lift the weight up and that is exactly why you need a spotter because according to the first few reps you think it might be very easy 
And these force reps are actually negative reps to which I drop the weight and then the spotter helps me get the weight up because the negative portion of the lift is actually what damages the muscle the most. And then as the very last set, set number six, I choose a lighter weight, 50 kilograms lighter than my maximum weight and do as many reps as possible to create an awesome pump to make the next exercise even more effective. So the next exercise, the incline, low to high cable flies. It's a mouthful, but it's a pretty easy exercise. You can do this standing or seated like I am doing right now. This exercise is perfect for the upper chest. Why for the upper chest? Because this mimics the exact motion that the upper chest is designed for. So going from down upwards in this natural arc position. And trust me, when you feel this exercise, when you feel doing it, it simply feels so nice to your chest. You really stretch it out to the max and you really feel this stretch because you already have a pump. And the better the pump, the better the stretch uh, will be that you feel. But also the contraction is to the very max. Because if you look at my hands, they go upwards as high as they can possibly go contracting the chest as hard as possible and that really is what makes this exercise different from the rest is the contraction here is absolutely amazing but the stretch at the same time is maximum as well and that is the difference between cable flies and doing this in a dumbbell version if you would do the dumbbell version you would simply lose tension on some range uh, of the motion but here, there's tension on the chest all the way down to all the way up, which is what you need for building muscle. It's one of the principles, time under tension. So having your own private gym really does help you seeing your own progress by being able to take your shirt off every once in a while. I do this because I know that I'm being recorded. I never take my shirt off normally when I work out, but knowing that I'm recorded, I actually can show you guys exactly the workings of the chest. You can really see that when I stretch out, you can see the fiber stretching out. And when I'm going upwards, you can see the bulging of the chest going all the way upwards, depending on how high my arms are going, depending on on how high my hands go so you really have to put your hands very high to get a maximum contraction in that upper chest which is exactly what this exercise is designed for so make sure to always do this exercise in that way if you cannot contract it anymore at the very top you simply have to lower the weight or you know do fewer reps but don't force too much because again your shoulders are very sensitive and that is not what you want to mess up during a chest workout and like Arnold said in between sets you can do some posing because the moment you finish a set using a different muscle using a certain muscle you can literally feel that muscle being present and it's very easy to then use it to contract it in a pose which helps you you know being more conscious of the way that you pose if you have any trouble doing those poses so I've been tr uh, changing my chest workout just a little bit from how I usually do it. I now like to do, for example, first a regular exercise like a flat dumbbell press or a flat bench press, but then move to a pump exercise like um, a fly, a cable fly, a dumbbell fly to really isolate the muscle first so it's already tired and then do again a press which is another compound exercise that allows other muscles to aid your chest in finishing the chest off to the max so your triceps are now able to help your chest and as you can see because of the previous exercise this weight that i'm usually able to do 15 reps with quite easily is very difficult to complete that's because i already exhausted it in the previous exercise and the feeling that you get in your chest when it's failing here is really really something else compared to if you do this exercise right at the beginning so it gives you a different sense a different feeling in the muscle which you no know, shocks the muscle it's a term often used but what it really means is you target the muscle differently with a different overloading system as your muscle is now more tired using an exercise that it's used to but it feels a lot heavier because it's already tired out 
And this is another classic exercise. Um, I actually did this because in my head I thought, what exercise should I do? And then I thought about a picture of Arnold doing these bench dips with some plates on his legs to make it even more challenging. And this is usually done for triceps because as you can see, the triceps are you know contracting as well. But if you do it correctly, if you angle your body forward like I am doing, it really enhances and targets the chest as well, especially the lower chest, which we haven't specifically targeted yet in this training. And as I always say, bodybuilding is all about hitting the same muscle from different angles to fill it in 100%. And of course, you cannot do this exercise alone. So again, you need a spotter to be able to do this exercise. So you need someone to put the plates on your legs. And then once you're uh, failing, you can actually remove those plates and do some extra reps. And that's called a drop set. Another tool you can use to overload the muscle even more and get an incredible pump to finish off this exercise with. And I'm doing cable pullovers right now to finish off the chest because the day before I actually did back and I ended with dumbbell pullovers, which I'm very easily able to utilize the back muscles. But I do this cable pullover at the end of the workout to be able to feel my chest the very best so I can really feel that stretch and you know search for that contraction much easier as the blood is already in there and I can really feel during this movement that the chest is working due to already having done all those other exercises. So I do those for three sets and then move on to some tricep exercises, combining the chest with the triceps. And this is a super set. So it's two sets in one go. So first the regular rope pushdowns to warm up those elbows and to get some blood in those triceps. And then the overhead tricep extension to really work on that long head, stretching the long head to the max and contracting it as well. And as you can see, the benefit of being lean is that when you actually do an exercise, and that's why I always recommend people doing a lean bulk instead of a dirty bulk, is that you can actually see the muscle contracting the way that it should. Because if I look in the mirror, you can really see the striations in the triceps. And once you see those striations, you know that the contraction that you're doing is adequate enough for the muscle. If you don't see any definition when you're lean and you're doing this exercise, you know that you're doing something wrong. You're not contracting the muscle to the max. You have to change the angle or positioning of your body to be able to contract it. And the same right here, the underhand push down, this targets the long head a little bit more and the medial head. But you can see during the contraction, you can see that the tricep is really changing its shape. And if I couldn't see that, I might not be able to, you know, I might be able to do a few cheat reps at the end, which would be useless. I want to pick a weight with which I can do clean reps, really filling that range of motion to the max, getting a nice contraction to get the most out of an exercise like this and the most hypertrophy possible. Because of course, when you're working a weak point, you want to make every single rep count. You don't want to do cheat reps. You don't want to do anything crazy. You simply want to do reps like this with slow negatives. And as I told you before in this video, negatives destroy and damages the muscle fibers the most. And what happens when muscle fibers are damaged, your body overcompensates by fixing those damaged muscle cells and building on top of them to make them stronger for next time. So if you're at a plateau with uh, building muscle, try doing the exact same workout routine, but then going very slow on the negative. You probably will have to go down in weight because it will feel a lot more difficult to perform the same amount of reps, but you will notice incredible results. Now, this is quite a challenging exercise to perform because you have to lay down on the bench in an awkward way. But if you do it right, you can really feel it tire out real quickly at the end of the workout. Because as you can see, even with a light dumbbell like this, the medial head and the long head really feel exhausted. They feel like they're finished. And then you know that you did a great workout for the triceps especially because then that means that the previous exercises really wasted enough energy in those muscles that you can say okay I train this muscle adequately but you always have to do a final exercise to find out if that is the case so I lower the weight a little bit 
push out some more reps out of these triceps because if you start out an entire exercise too heavy you can only do five or six reps simply go down in weight because first of all you want more time on the tension and secondly you don't want to injure yourself you don't want to risk any injury so go a little lighter finish those reps get a nice finishing pump and then have your beautiful post workout meal anyway guys this was the workout of the day i want to thank you for watching and do not forget to stay